Hello YouTubers and welcome to another episode of The Vlogs. Today we're back on the rowing machine and as you can tell from the title we're talking about heart rate training. And did you know the maximum heart rate ever recorded in a human is 480 beats a minute? So we're not going to be approaching that today or anywhere near it. Way under half of that. But talking about the benefits of heart rate training post this session where I'm doing a lot of heart rate measuring. So I'll be doing easy paddling for 40 minutes, then stepping up to a little bit harder, a little bit harder, a little bit harder, and basically starting around 50%, 55% heart rate, then up to 60, 65, 70, 75, 80, 85, 90% heart rate, all the way through for 90 minutes. So it's really important for me to keep a track of my heart rate with my heart rate belt on, so that I know what intensity I'm doing. And so in this workout for me, the split isn't too important. But now we're gonna get on to this workout and then talk about the importance of heart rate training and how it can help you maximize your training. Oh, you. That's us finished the 90 minutes, so 23.346k going up through the rates. The heart rate was actually reasonably low. As you saw until the end, usually I would expect it 5 to 10 beats higher, so that's pretty good news. But usually what I do for the first hour is get my phone out and watch YouTube or Netflix or get a podcast or something on. Today was some just a random assortment of YouTube videos keeping me occupied as it goes through the lower intensities. And then once I get through the first hour, so that's 40 minutes UT3, 20 minutes UT2, switch on some heavy tracks to get me through the last half hour where we'll build up in rate. So I did 25, 28, 31 for the last 14, eight, or eight, five, three minutes and building up through there. So pretty good workout. Heart rate, like I said, not as high as it has been, which is good news. It is very hot in here, which can affect the heart rate, but now, Let's get some food in, because remember, food is fuel. And then we'll talk a little bit more about heart rate training. Oh, yeah! And we've made it back to the flat. We've had some excellent recovery. Yam's got a delicious chew. We've had some food, because remember, food is fuel. We've let the heart rate come down post-erg with the climbing rates and the climbing heart rate. But before we get started, talking about heart rate training well if you want to do heart rate training then you need to get one of these and what is one of these well it's a heart rate monitor they come in so many different variations they can range in a lot of prices from i don't know 50 pounds up to thousands of pounds i'll put a couple of links in the description below of some heart rate monitors that i would use for me personally like i've spoke about before 
I don't like too many features on my heart rate watch. I just want it to do heart rate. I don't need it to do space calculus. I don't need it to tell me how many steps I've taken. I just want it to do heart rate and then heart rate for intervals. So I'll put a couple of links on Amazon just to a couple of heart rate watches that I would recommend, ranging from pretty simple, pretty cheap, and all the way up. There will be affiliate links, so if you do get anything from there, I would get a kickback, it has to be said. But heart rate training, why should you even get one of these heart rate watches? Why should you pay attention to your heart rate during your training? Whatever it is, it doesn't just have to be rowing, it could be running, it could be swimming, it could be any exercise whatsoever. Tracking your heart rate is very important. One reason, it is an incredibly easy way to gauge your intensity. Sometimes when I'm doing a workout, like today, when I'm building up through the rates and I'm building up through the intensities, building up through the speeds, you can sit at certain stroke rates on the rowing machine and think, that split's pretty good. But then you look at your heart rate and you're thinking, hmm, I've actually got five, maybe 10 beats to play with where I can actually bring it up to the level of intensity that I want it to be. And on the opposite side of things, sometimes you look down, you see your heart rate is too high, you're thinking, okay, it's time to back off. And going off of this, once you know your intensities, then you can start to figure out which bands of training you want to train in. And going off of that, using your heart rate and figuring out what heart rate you want to do for certain speeds, certain splits, certain rates, whatever it is, rowing or running or any other sport, you can start to say, okay, this is my heart rate for that speed or that intensity. And you can start training in bands and then make your training even more specific to you as an individual, which is hugely, hugely important. Someone pulling, say, a two minute split might find it incredibly difficult. Someone else pulling a two minute split might find it really easy. So that's why everyone, I think, should at least try doing heart rate training because giving people speeds is just really, really general and can end up pushing people into the wrong training zones. And so when I'm talking about training zones, there are, depending on which train of thought you follow, but there are multiple training zones as you climb through the heart rate zones, there's different categories that you climb that apply to different types of fitness. And basically, aerobic fitness, the stuff that you do for a long period of time, that's the lower heart rates, and then the anaerobic fitness, the exercises and the intensities that mean that you start to produce a lot of lactic acid because there's not enough oxygen coming in and your body's still trying to produce energy. The really hard stuff is when the heart rate is a lot higher. And then there's sort of that middle ground as well. And that's where there's essentially three zones where you can train in. And again, it can vary on your different trains of thought, but there are always different bands. And with those bands and with your heart rate, you can say, well, today I'm training in the low band, whatever that, whatever you want to call that. And tomorrow I'm gonna to train in the high band. And also a benefit of being in the right bands or zones, whatever you want to call it, it means that you are not overdoing it in the easy stuff. So I'll, I've really struggled with, over the last few years anyway, over, over my rowing career in general, of just pushing as hard as I can at all times, in all sessions. Whether it's supposed to be an easy session or supposed to be a hard session, it's been a case of, okay, I'm gonna get this session done regardless of how it feels or what I should be really actually paying attention to. And it's really a trap that I can fall into or I have fallen into before because I want to say, okay, I've done that split for this, say it's a, an, an hour workout. I've done a fast split for that hour workout. But in reality, it doesn't really matter for that hour workout. That hour workout was supposed to be a nice easy session, a long session to develop my fitness, my aerobic fitness. And where as I've now tried really hard in that session and I've not had as much aerobic fitness benefits because I've pushed too hard, my heart rate's skyrocketed through the whole workout, it's become even an anaerobic session where it's really struggling and then on top of that, the recovery becomes even more difficult 
because I've spent so much more energy trying to do a session that was supposed to be easy in the first place. So heart rate training for me, at least going in this new training program, has showed me a little bit of, okay, I'm in these zones. Sometimes I'm, I can be in a zone or I should be doing UT2, so that steady state session. So for me, my heart rate is around 130. And so when I'm sitting at 130, sometimes the split is a lot slower than I'm used to seeing. And so I almost have to say, no, nope, I'm sticking to it and I'm going to just keep pushing forward and seeing what happens. And I've PB'd in my half hour over the past week or so. And so it is looking positive. But like I said in the previous video, fitness just doesn't happen over a couple of weeks or a few weeks. It is a long process. But I think the biggest thing about keeping a track of your intensities is making sure you are recovering properly or giving yourself the opportunity to recover properly. So say you have 10 workouts a week, five workouts a week, you can really focus on the levels of intensity for those workouts and make sure that you're ready for the next one. Say you have two sessions in one day, you can say, okay, one of them is supposed to be easy and then it's not eating into the next session because you've tried too hard and it's been too intense from that previous session is eating into that next session. So hopefully all of that makes sense. Let me know in the comments below if you agree or disagree. And lastly, so there's been a lot of questions about how do I figure out my max heart rate? What do I do? There's loads of different calculations out there to, to try and calculate your max heart rate without actually testing it physically. But really, testing it physically is the only way to really accurately know your max heart rate. But unfortunately, any workout or any test that involves max heart rate is very, very difficult. So I have looked at my heart rate during 2Ks, during 5Ks, during half hours, and the highest I have seen is 200. And so my max heart rate will be around there. It won't be far off or it might actually be 200, but I'm basing my heart rate zones off of about 200 because that's where I've seen mine. So I would recommend if you basically want to find out your max heart rate is wait till your next 2K, wait till your next 5K and finish yourself on that 2K or in that 5K, whatever that test is and see what that heart rate is at the end. It might not be your max heart rate, but it will be, I reckon, pretty close to it. And obviously you can take the calculations that you might find around the internet and see if it's close to what you think. If it's really far off, then you might want to reconsider. But I've looked at the calculations around. You can kind of take an average, get three or four different calculations and take an average of those and see if it's close to what you thought during that test. So most of the calculations say mine is between sort of 198 and 205. And so if I am saying it's 200, because that's what I've seen, it's pretty close. So hopefully that helps if you're trying to figure out what your max heart rate is. And then again, from that, you can start to calculate your zones and then apply that to sort of the easy workouts, the hard workouts, the middle workouts, and all of that to make sure you are in the right place and the right intensity. So that will be it for today's episode. Hopefully you've enjoyed it. Heart rate training for me right now is a hugely important part of the training itself. Hopefully you guys can take a little bit of that and use it in your training. You don't have to use it. It's not the be all and end all, but again, it can really accurately tell your intensities, even not just during the workouts, telling you, okay, I'm in the right band, but sometimes it can tell you, okay, you're under recovered or you're ill and all of that as well. So maybe that's a whole nother video about illness and recovering properly with heart rate. But again, I think it is a hugely valuable thing to do and getting one of these it's really accessible if you just want a basic heart rate watch like I've got or if you want to get one that's really expensive you can do that too but I think heart rate measuring now if you get just a chest strap is really really accessible really really easy and like I said I'll put some some links in the description below for different different methods so one connects to the erg and you can just use a strap and then you don't need a watch. 
Uh, one like mine, you can it's just basic heart rate strap. One a little bit more complicated, but does some other things like measuring. You've got GPS in there, and then you've got top of the range ones as well. So I've tried to cover the bases, but again, hopefully that helps with your training, the Yam Squad's training, and as we progress further into 2020, we will hopefully all get fitter together by measuring your heart rate or not. Hopefully the fitness does improve though. And that will finally be it for today's episode of Yam Squad. Hopefully you've enjoyed it. And as always, remember to subscribe if you haven't already, hit that like button, and I will see you on the next episode of the vlogs which won't be tomorrow because tomorrow is a recovery day, a rest day, which I will be taking my heart rate for just to make sure that I am whew, recovered and chilled out. But Sunday, Sunday is going to be an interesting one because Sunday is going to be a 2K on the rowing machine in preparation for an event coming up in February. Oh <laughs> yeah!